Hello my friends, today another video I'm going to talk about the Camus DDW B21 versus the Camus C12. With a price of $549 or about €505 Euro for the C12, it is a fraction cheaper than the retail price of $609 for the DDW B21. Availability of both is roughly the same. Camus has warehouses set up in certain countries and orders via their Chinese warehouse are also possible. Both are priced very sharply when compared to the competition. When it comes to design, the two couldn't be more different. Both the housings of the wheelbases are made for the most part out of aluminium and with some extra steel for the DDW B21, judging by the weight. The finishing for both is a sober black with some metallic highlights. And that is where the similarities end. Because of the innovative use of an external rotor, the C12 is much more compact than the DDW B21 and unlike the DDW B, doesn't feature a quick release because of this design. On the DDW B21, there is a multitude of light up buttons and some funky retro switches. It can be attached to your rig by the bottom or via the extrusion channels on the sides. The C12 on the other hand can be attached with four bolts directly to your rig with the included braces or with the optional desk clamp. The 32cm GT1 steering wheel that comes in a pack with the DDW B21 is a lot more simple than the more modern and premium looking integrated button box and 30cm steering wheel of the C12. Both feature light up buttons, but the LEDs on the C12 are programmable for color. The C12 also features an impressive and programmable rev bar and display. The shifter pedals of both are decent, but I feel like everything about the steering wheel that the C12 pedals just are a bit nicer to handle and feel more premium too. A point of attention for these shifters would be the positioning as they cannot be adapted out of the box. The biggest and most appreciated difference between both is however the mouse emulating joystick on the C12. Absolutely a game changer for a game like Beam G. A DDW B21 uses a motor with an internal rotor, generates 50 Nm of uh, constant torque and then you have the C12 which has the motor, a normal motor, but with the external rotor and that generates a 12 newton meter of constant torque with, of course, higher peaks also. The DDW B21, it features a quick release system uh, completely made out of metal, so you can just click on uh, another steering wheel. That is not possible with the C12. What is possible, however, is uh, that you can just take the steering wheel frame and that you can mount it on it. You have to like unscrew all the screws and just just put the frame of the uh, of, of a steering wheel on it of course um, there is a problem because the button box is integrated in the c12 in the mechanism of the rotor so then you need to see that the the, the hole cutouts will uh, match do, those of the, the the button box in this case for this gts wheel it isn't possible sadly enough the last thing that I want to mention is that the connections have also changed. You have seven connections for extra peripherals on the DDW B21 um, and they use the RG ports to connect them. This is a big difference also with the C12. It only has two ports to add for extra peripherals and they are USB-C, which is for me a much better principle than the RJ uh, uh, connectors because it doesn't have that stupid lip that can break off. Here we go. This part of the road very special because there's a lot of detail here and it starts now with the uh, lighter detail and it goes heavier towards the first corner and you feel it intensify. It does a really good job in intensifying the, the details. But I do think that the intensity of the DDWB is, is harder. It is more raw, the, uh, the details in the road than it is with this one. Now, with RAW, it's not necessarily better, huh? So, it feels, you'd feel it less with this one, but um, it feels more natural, less, uh, less, less grainy. Yeah, okay, I just wanted to feel that a bit. Here, lightly. To no details in the road. 
yeah, catching bumps. Okay, here also I feel it on the, a bit more on the left side that I go with the left tire over the over the curb. This part is also very important because there is a lot of detail in it. Now it does transmit a lot of detail, and and it goes deep at the detail. I can feel it really in my pedal base. But what is important here is that I still do think that the that the details that are being transmitted that they are just um, not as defined as I have with the Trustmaster T818, not as fluent perhaps, that uh, a bit more rocky, a bit more grainy than I have with the with, with the Trustmaster. Now it's not bad, eh? I mean the, the details that I felt in the Trustmaster are the best uh, details or quality of details that I have felt so far, so really really uh, not bad. But it's a bit the, sh the same as I had with the um, with the C12 of Camus. Here, yeah, you can you can really feel the details getting uh, intensifying. But the um, nice. I believe that the C12 is is also more powerful because I I set it more restricted for the power. I think I is now on 70% on the base and. Uh, 80 in the game itself and I had it on 180 for the uh, DDWB So it feels more powerful this uh, this one But it's fun huh? I particularly liked it when the DDWB21 was able to make the pedals vibrate the effects of the force feedback and then particularly the road details felt sharper and more raw while the C12 felt more smooth. Which one you prefer is personal I think, but both steering wheels performed very well in the ACC testing. Uh, perfect. Uh, re returning back to center, just enough force, I mean uh, it feels so smooth and much more smoother than, uh, than uh, with, the, with the DDWB. I don't know if it is really smoother, but it just feels more natural, uh, less uh, less artificial. I, I do feel a bit the the uh, different, but not a lot. Not like I do with the C12. A little bit of detail on the roads, of the bumps. So the bumps, yeah, that you can feel. Ah, look at that, it's, it's, so, it's just so smooth with this one. Eh? Uh, sorry, but that was not my thing. While I enjoy driving both of them, it is a C12 without a shadow of a doubt that scores better here. I like the smoothness of both the ride and the fabric of the steering wheel. But not only that, the steering wheel includes a lot of functionality with the buttons and joysticks, something which is a really nice feature for BMG. I also can see why this wheelbase is so popular in the drifting community with its snappy return to center and abundance of configuration. Yeah, <clears throat> as a conclusion, I do think, uh oh, as a conclusion, I do think that uh, there is uh, a bit more, but the, the detail, the detail that you get is the same. The detail that you get is the same, but. The details that uh, that are generated here, they feel more softer, more smoother, more yeah, more natural, and and that is the big difference here. Okay, 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 friend. When it comes to force, yeah, I would I would say that this uh, the the C12 has more power than the uh, DDWB. It's strange, huh? but I, it's not strange because this is a completely different uh, uh, type of motor. Oh, what is it? The ecosystem is very small for both and even smaller for the C12 since the GTS steering wheel frame doesn't fit on it. There are some other steering wheels and steering wheel frames available, but at this moment I think they are missing quite some profit because of the limited extra peripherals available. 
What I would love to see in this ecosystem is that they bring out a shifter. Uh, just a normal uh, H pattern shifter would be very nice to have from them. And also, uh, they need to start looking in the market for the sim race, I, not the sim racers, but the sim simulation drivers. Because if I look at um, Moza, I really like it that it's all, almost one of the only manufacturers that they brought out like the trucker steering wheel. I would love to see this coming from Chemist as well, that they make like a few add-ons for the C12, that you just have like a normal steering wheel with normal buttons on it with a little horn like you see with the trucker's wheel of, of Moza. So really something for Chemist to, to still work on uh, and, and it's really necessary that they put some effort on this in this too. Both wheelbases are available on the PC platform only and can be configured in the Camus software. There is quite a lot to configure for these wheelbases. The difference here is that the C12 has some extra settings available like a constant force filter and some extra game parameters. On top of this, you have the choice to program the color of your buttons and the rev bar. The software and firmware are also updated on regular intervals. I believe that the DDWB21 was a good proof of concept already. It's a very powerful and impressive wheelbase and is available at a more than decent price. But the competition from their own C12 is an absolute killer. With the C12 being two and a half times lighter and only taking a fraction of the space, it is much more suitable for compact sim solutions than its big brother. The driving sensation too, while the DTWB is certainly on par and even better at letting you feel the intensity of the details in ACC, it does not match the natural feeling of the C12 in both games I tested. When looking at the theoretical strength of both wheelbases, the C12, even with lower specs, feels more powerful than the DDWB21 when I drove it. And the build quality, well, it has gone from good to better with the C12. In fact, it's very hard to think of anything which would make me prefer the DDWB21 above its younger sibling. For me, the older wheelbase is just a victim of the evolution in wheelbases with an, in my opinion, far too short lifespan. Thank you all for watching. I hope you had something from this video. Give me a like if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more videos and I will see you all next video. Bye bye.